Hey guys, Dave from Wolfhard Hobbing here, and welcome to another Tuesday Talk. Uh, so the Dawn of War 3 trailer, uh, announcement trailer, dropped last week. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're keeping up with uh, Wargaming in general, you've probably seen it plastered everywhere. Um, now, I just kind of wanted to go over some of my thoughts and, and uh, my reaction to the video. So at first, you know, the fanboy kind of really kicked over. Uh, I was just in in awe that the fact that they're making a Dawn of War 3. Uh, as you, uh, you've known in some of my past talks and everything like that, that Dawn of War really helped me get into the hobby, into the game itself, as well as, uh, you know, just the fact that I love the game overall. Um, so uh, with the trailer uh, dropping, uh, it was kind of uh, nice to see this Space Marines, uh, so I'm just going to kind of go over my reactions now. Uh, the Space Marines in the video were very lackluster. Um, it made it seem like all the other races were a little bit better. Uh, you know, just like the fact that in the opening scene, they're kneeling in front of the Emperor's statue and they're getting hit with rocks or bullets or something. Anyways, they're all just kneeling, getting hit with something, and then all of a sudden, this tide of orcs comes over, which, and then it shows, like, you know, a bunch of dead space marines getting, uh, you know, picked through by uh, Gretchen and, and some of the orc boys, and then, then it cuts to the Eldar, uh, well, more specifically, the Banshee, um, that was phenomenal for me to see as an Eldar player and just as a, 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 a gamer in general. Just the detail on the, um, the, the kind of wraith bone armor, how it looked more organic than, say, like Space Marine armor that looks more man made. It looked really organic. The sword looked organic. Um, overall, I just loved the look of the Banshees. Um, which has kind of also inspired me to paint my Banshees in that like kind of pale white color scheme. Not the bone that Banshees are usually painted in, but a very pale white type of thing. But anyway, so the, then you're showing the Banshees and they're coming down from whatever. And then, uh, then it shows a group of Space Marines charging at the Orcs. Now, at that scene there, my problem with that was... The Space Marines looked very top-heavy. Uh, it looked like they had very, like, normal human-style legs. Now, maybe that was just, uh, you know, uh, an animation choice um, to get the trailer out. Because some of the other parts where you see some of the Space Marines, their legs don't look as skinny. They look like they should be regular Space Marine legs. But that was my issue there. Um, and then as as they're running, you know, you have one tactical marine going up, I think, against a death dread, uh, which in my mind, you know, they're space marines. They're supposed to be very uh, good tacticians, good soldiers, things like that. So the idea of one dude charging at a death dread or whatever that happens to be for the orcs with just a chainsword and a bolt pistol seemed kind of stupid to me, you know, and then, of course, he gets caught and chopped in half. And then the best part of the video for me as an Eldar player was just it exploding. You see that giant ghost glaive from the Wraith Knight. And you see the three Wraith Knights walking. Just, it was phenomenal for me. And the amount of detail on it. Like, I love the model, but I, like, the actual Games Workshop model. But I love the model for that game, for that cinematic at least. Because you saw, like, more, like, wires and, and things like that than, that you don't see on the actual model as it would be a lot of fiddly bits that would break off. Um, but again, the wraith bone armor, just looking like it would it's actual bone. Um, and just the level of detail in that was kind of awesome. And then it gets shot by a uh, Night Titan, and it comes char the Night Titan charges, and that wraith knight just chops that thing in half. Phenomenal. I love that. I was just like, oh my god, that is so cool. And then you have that other night titan that just lunges in. Um, now it's amazing. Like that that scene there, it just, it made my day. Like I was just like, that is so awesome. Because I think when I see the night titan models, I think very clunky kind of dreadnought movement where it's, you know, robotic in sense. And just to see those things running like 
in a fluid motion and charging in and just like going head first into a wraith knight was just phenomenal it just really changed my perspective on it um then my my other issue my whole issue with the trailer was kind of a lot of the space marine stuff because then at the end of the trailer you have the uh the space marine that's shown in the the beginning he looks up and he holds up his chainsaw as if he was going to block the fall of the night titan and the wraith knight and then he gives the dumbest goofiest grin ever like i looked at this and i'm like this guy like that's just a stupid facial expression um so you know nitpicking aside you know it was an awesome trailer made me really hyped I, i've been actually been playing a lot of dawn of war 2 again and uh so you know the trailer did what it needed to do it didn't give us a lot of information it was a teaser and for me as a fanboy of both 40k as a tabletop and dawn of war i just fell in love and i was like like my wife was kind of just like what are those noises coming out of you and i just turned to her and i said i have to have this game hopefully my computer can run it and i don't have to buy a new system to uh to play the game uh but i'm really hoping that now uh one thing that's been making the rounds, uh, if you follow Bell of Lost Souls on Facebook or whatever, they showed, uh, I believe it was Awaken Realms, their uh, painting commission studio. Uh, they recreated that scene with the Night Titan uh, lunging at the Wraith Knight in model form. And it's phenomenal. I would love to have that as just a display piece uh, if I could ever afford it. or Because I cannot convert and I would never be able to to do the quality of job that they could. So like, it, it's just, uh, that was phenomenal to see it being done from, you know, the, the trailer and then put into tabletop. Now, another thing that's been going around, like if you go to the Dawn of War website, they have a, a kind of a, a sneak peek at, um, an article that was written for PC gamer, uh, magazine. And it kind of goes over a little bit, uh, not too in depth, but a little bit more in depth of what to kind of expect out of uh, Dawn of War Three. So we know uh, just by the trailer uh, that we're only getting three races in this game. We're getting the Eldar, the Orcs, and Space Marines. So, uh, which has me thinking maybe they're going to go kind of Dawn of War One style, uh, where they're going to release expansions. Uh, and continue the storyline with new races involved. So I kind of hope they go that route because uh, it just seems like a great business decision. Like it would be kind of stagnant to just only have three races ever. Um, now uh, I'm not. I'm pretty sure it's not. It's not following the story of like like Dawn of War Two did, where. Uh, you know, every expansion was about this one system in the Blood Ravens chapter. Uh, from what this article said, it's three races on a planet, and they're all going after a weapon. Now, there's no mention of what the weapon is, what it does, why all three races want it. Um, orcs probably want it because, you know, orcs like to loot and have the big guns and stuff. And Space Marines probably want it to uh, just have it for whatever reason eldar uh, i hope they give a little bit more story uh f you know uh, as to why the eldar are kind of in here um like dawn of war 2 um the retribution you know the everybody at the end was going after spoilers alert the demon prince uh chapter master I already forget his name. Anyways, for the Blood Ravens, he becomes a demon prince uh, of corn, and uh, the Eldar want to kill him because they want to get this soul stone from the Farseer. Uh, can't remember her name either, but from Dawn of War One, she dies, and uh, their her soul stone gets passed around the universe or something. Anyways, so when reading that, I was kind of disappointed. Uh, because I was kind of hoping that for the single player um, campaign story that they would kind of have 
maybe a storyline for the Eldar. Like it could all be in the same system and the storylines could intersect. But I, I'm really hoping they don't just do parallel. Like it says that, uh, you know, you'll, uh, from what I gather from the article is that you'll play as all three races. The storyline, you don't pick a race and then follow it. You play all three so that you learn to play the orcs. You learn how to play Eldar. You learn how to play Space Marines, which is fine. But I would have loved to see like an Eldar campaign, you know, like a completely different story. Uh, has nothing to do with whatever the Space Marines or Orcs are doing. Just the Eldar are here for their own reasons. Okay, we've ran into sp some Space Marines. We ran into some Orcs um, type idea. Or going kind of maybe parallel with their story. Like, okay, you know, Gabriel Angelos is going to this place. For some reason, the Eldar intersect and a battle ensues type idea. Uh, so, But with all three races going after the same weapon, I really hope they flush the story a little better so that um, it's not repetitive. And I don't want to see a single player campaign um, just become you beat it and you never go back to it. I, those types of games I, I don't like. Um, just because I want to see the stories from different aspects. So that's why I'm hoping maybe like... Uh, you know, the stories will kind of intersect and go parallel like this. The orcs are here for X reason and it all leads to maybe this one weapon could be fun. But with Dawn of War 2, like you, you did every single mission the same, at least in Retribution. You did every single mission. It was pretty much the same mission over and over and over again for every different uh, race with some minor uh, variety. But... Um, as, but, uh, the only thing that I, that ha has been said that is carrying over is that Gabriel Angelos is going to be in for the space Marines as an elite unit. Uh, the Farseer, I can't, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but we're getting a, a new Farseer and then the orc war boss. I don't think he's got a name yet. Um, but also from the article, uh, we it, it states that uh, the army size is going to be bigger than it was in Dawn of War 2. Uh, it looks like they're taking a lot of gameplay aspects from uh, Dawn of War 1, where you have these huge armies. Um, they also state that base building is back in. Now, how in-depth it will be if it's like Dawn of War 1, where uh, you like you have to build your power, you have your HQ, you have your barracks, uh, you need power generators. If that's in it, that'd be awesome. Because I, I like that aspect of the game. Uh, that's why I still play Dawn of War 1 uh, sometimes, is the fact of base building, large armies just clashing into each other and... Uh, and it's just a great game overall, too. Um, now, uh, so with the bigger armies as well, it looks like um, they, they, they also state that there's going to, just for uh, single player, is you're going to have three elite slots. Um, and what that means is like, okay, so if you're, uh, you'll get like heroes and elite units that you can level up and things like that. Uh, and what they claim is collecting. So, uh, you know, your Night Titan is going to be one. Gabriel Angelos is another elite hero. You're going to get other heroes along the way. Um, and before each mission, you select which three elites you want. And I'm not sure. They don't say, but, you know, maybe they come in later at a certain time. You can call down an elite or whatever. Um, now for multiplayer, uh, they, they, they say it states that they are having a co-op, uh, multiplayer. So I'm kind of hoping it's like Dawn of War two, where it's just, you know, here's a map, uh, you can go against other people online or, uh, you know, some bots and, you know, you've got your starting locations have at, have at it. Um, now for the elite selection, they state it's going to be kind of a Dota style. Now I've only played Dota once, uh, so I'm not uh, sure exactly what that means. Where it's uh, uh, you select and then there's a counter selection and then you you select again and um, things like that. Um, so it's kind of sorry. I've got notes here of what I want to 
really go over as there's so much that I want to go over. Um, so yeah, like uh, the elite slots for multiplayer, I, I'm hoping that's maybe just multiplayer versus um, or, or what that means. Because like co-op, mul- um, co-op multiplayer uh, is one aspect of RTS games that I love. I love having a team of like me and my buddies going up against this you know, uh, hard computers or whatever. Like, I don't play competitively against other people. I'm not a big PvPer, and um, sometimes I just like, you know, uh, picking up a game and playing it. I don't really like having to, like, remember, okay, I got to research this, 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 just to win. <clears throat> so I play a lot of, like, just against hard or expert or insane computers type things like that. Now, as far as units go, uh, Space Marines, the only, like, new thing that we know of right now at least the article states is uh the night titan uh eldar are getting the wraith knight obviously and they're getting jet bikes so which makes me think that maybe space marines might be getting bikes as well um not too sure uh but well i'll have to see like um this is just kind of a sneak peek uh article um to what's going to be coming in i think it's eight pages in the next pc gamer magazine issue so i'm going to keep my eye out, um, out for that but jet bikes for the eldar would be awesome um uh and as I, other things i'm kind of hoping for is i hope the uh army painter uh in it is as in depth as uh, dawn of war one where you can choose like my problem with Dawn War 2's Army Painter was they have all the GW colors and that's all you can. Like, you know, if you have a if you have um like a, a homebrew color or a mixed color, you can't do that in Dawn of War 2. You have to, okay, well, here's all the colors, you gotta get the closest one. That bothers me. It doesn't let me give the uh, customization to my army that I want. Um and it doesn't really It doesn't really matter, but at the same time, like, that's one part I enjoy the hobby is painting. So, like, you know, I want to see my Space Marine chapter fielded properly. You know, like, my Space Wolves, they're dark blue with red shoulder pads. That's easy to do in Dawn of War 2. But my Raven Guard um, that I usually play in these games, the color scheme I have is all black, but one shoulder pad is blue. Well, I can't do that in Dawn of War. Both shoulder pads are blue, which is not a big deal. But I'd really like to see that I can make my home armies, my homebrew armies, in this game. Uh, now, it, it states in the article, too, that uh, the colors are kind of a little bit more vibrant um, and not dark and gritty as they were in Dawn of War 2. Um, just to make things easier on the battlefield. Uh, just to, so you could spot your dudes a little easier. Now, uh, another part of the article it states a lot about multi uh, about the big scale battles, making everything easier to see on the battle. You know, like cover systems are going to work a little different. They'll have like a, a circle of barricades that you can uh, take over, and your guys are resistant to range fire, but you launch some close combat units in there and tear them up, and then you take over the platform. Um, I really hope they keep kind of the same concept of terrain and everything as Dawn of War 2 did. Uh, Just for the simple fact that I like that. I like a lot of the cover and stuff like that. Um, If they're making everything too easy for, you know, these big scale battles or whatever, I think that the game could get a little boring. Um, But we'll see. Uh, Another thing I really hope they bring back is the map editor, but make it playable for multiplayer. Um, Like uh, my buddy Chris, he he really likes uh, he building maps. Like he did it for uh, Neverwinter Nights, Stark. We did a lot for Warcraft Two, Warcraft Three, Starcraft. Uh, We love making our own maps, our own levels. You know, kind of giving our own thematic. But the problem with Dawn of War 2's map editor was you had to play with files to make it playable for multiplayer. And then they would patch it and then that line of code didn't work anymore. So I really hope they make um, map editing and using it for maybe uh, maybe not like uh, 
online, like, you know, versus other people, but like maybe like have a way where a custom game uh, against bots or even against humans, but just a custom game where you can use your own custom maps would be awesome because that way too, like, because it's going to be on Steam, you can have the workshop involved, you can uh, get custom maps, you can just really vary up your um, your game. And that's what I like to see, and that's what I kind of like about the Steam Workshop, is it gives you a lot of options to uh, keep your game fresh. Um, but other than that, guys, um, the other thing in the article they state is Space Marines are getting an orbital laser. Um, and from what I read, it sounds kind of ridiculous, and I really hope that maybe it's a a one use only thing. Apparently, like the laser strikes, and as it hits more people, it gets fatter and bigger and deadlier, and and goes slower apparently. And so I hope like it's not as overpowered as it sounds, because uh, from what it sounds like is oh it hits your dudes, they're dead. Like there's no they take X amount of damage, they're just dead. They burn up. Uh, now I don't know if that's fluffy at all, like a laser that you know, as it kills more guys becomes bigger. Maybe it's just, you know, maybe they'll change that and make it while it hits and over time it gets bigger and then it dissipates. Maybe, maybe the, I don't know, but that's what it says in the article. And that was kind of, uh, kind of it for me when I read that was just kind of like, I don't, I don't like this idea. But anyways, guys, that's my thoughts and reactions to Dawn of War 3. Super excited for it to come out. Uh, we don't have a release date yet, obviously. Um, from what I've read on their website, that it's been in development for a while now. And uh, they've been keeping it secret, they say, for years. Now, that could be true. That may not. Uh, I don't know. Um Here's to hoping that it doesn't take too much longer to come out. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts and reactions to the announcement trailer and to the uh, game itself. I, uh, I see a lot of potential for this game, uh, especially if they're taking a lot of aspects from Dawn of War 1. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it seems like it could be an amazing game. Again, I hope they do the expansion route where, and introduce more races because... You know, three races would get stagnant, and you're you're leaving out a lot of player base too, like your Tau players, Chaos. Um, you know, I kind of hope that they do, if they do uh, bring in Chaos, that they don't do it like Dawn of War 2. Don't bring in Chaos with a little mix of demons, because it's really weird when I want to run a Slanesh army, and I've got blood letters running around. Like, uh, it really felt like they dropped the ball with Chaos. Um... I hope they bring in Chaos Space Marines as just Chaos Space Marines. Then they bring in your demons. I would really love to see just demons. Uh, whether it's you select what god you follow at first or if you can have all four, whatever. Um, but then, you know, you've got your Dark Eldar. You've got your, you know, you can even bring back Sisters of Battle if you want. Um, and I hope each chapter... Uh, gets its own look like the space wolves look like space wolves dark angels look like dark angels not just the here's a stock marine okay you want you want to play your dark angels okay boom he's just in dark angels color you know and maybe not release them as dlc packs that would be uh i don't like dlc packs i i'd like to see a lot of that right off the bat but that's just me i don't know anything about making games i just play the hell out of them so um, you know, if that's too difficult, if, you know, some of you guys know how to make games, if that's too difficult and that's why they don't do it, then that, whatever, that's, that's their decision as a business. Like they, they can't cater to every single, uh, person with a YouTube channel who wants something from them. But anyways, guys, uh, on my painting table, uh, nothing really right now. I'm taking a break from painting, uh, just cause I'm feeling a little bit of burnout. Uh, as far as games go, uh, I am letting you guys know that Death Watch is dead in the water. Uh, I won't be doing a Death Watch campaign, but uh, I have been talking with my other buddies who play 40k. Uh, so we'll probably do a kill team. Uh, that way, um, my buddy Chris, if he wants, he can bring his Imperial Guard. Whereas Death Watch, it had to be Space Marines. Um, uh, X-Wing campaign looks like it's probably going to happen. 
Uh, I just have to really get the rules down and how the gameplay goes. So as soon as we got that, I'll start uh, filming that as well. Uh, I've also been working on my own homebrew Zombicide campaign, uh, where but uh, still working on the rules. But I want to know if you guys would like to watch that. Like uh, the games would be played regular. I'd have story times to let you know like what's happening with the group of survivors and whatever. So if that's something you guys would be interested, please let me know in the comment section below or uh, just let me know in a any way you can. That that would be something you'd like to see. Uh, just because there would probably be a couple of us uh, playing. Uh, there would be five of us. Yeah, four including me. That would probably be playing. So, you know, to get that many people in one spot and film and everything like that. That one would take a little bit more work than, say, just uh, a Kill Team or the X-Wing campaign. So let me know if, that, if you guys would be interested in seeing a narrative uh, version of Zombicide. Um... As for uh, next week, um, I'm going to try and get uh, my wife to come on and kind of give her thoughts and opinions on what it's like to be married uh, to a war gamer, what's like living with a war gamer, um, and things like that. So if you have, if you have any uh, questions for her, uh, leave them in the comment section below uh, as well. So she can answer those questions as she's pretty calm about the whole idea. So, uh, like, you know, we've been together for three years so you know the whole idea of me buying models and stuff doesn't really phase her anymore so you know if you have any specific things you want to know about what it's like to maybe just live with me in general um leave a comment uh with your question um and as always guys you know uh, any comments or uh topics you'd like to me to cover uh or questions you'd like me to answer uh, leave them in the comment section below as well. Um, as And again, there will be a link to my Facebook uh, account in the description. So if you want to shoot me a message on Facebook or uh, even sh want to ask Amanda a question on Facebook, uh, sh shoot it over that way and we'll, uh, we'll get it ready for next week so she can uh, do a Tuesday talk. There will be a link to my Patreon account as well, as always. Um, it's not mandatory, but you know, uh, if you guys want to show some support that way, that'd be awesome. It allows me to get new models in, uh, so I can do product reviews, uh, unboxings, painting tutorials, uh, as well as uh, allows me to cover some more stuff in game. So, uh, like I'm looking at wanting to do Age of Sigmar, but right now with uh, resources and financing, it's not look like it. It, it doesn't look like it's going to happen for a while. So that's why my Patreon account's set up that way. So if the, you know you guys want to show some support uh, that way. Uh, other than that, guys, that's it for this week. Uh, let me know your thoughts on, on Dawn of War 3 as well, if you've seen the trailer. If you haven't, I posted it on my Facebook page. Uh, go check it out. It's, again, a really amazing trailer. Um, so, you know... Uh, if you haven't already, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on what I'm doing and my painting tutorials and hopefully my bat reps. I know I said back in January, uh, New Year, I want to get these bat reps um, going out more. But again, time constraints, like I, everybody's got lives and things like that, so it's hard to get everybody together. So other than that, guys, I want to thank you for watching the video, supporting the channel, and, uh, you know, just keeping me going for a little bit longer. Uh, but you guys are awesome, and thanks for all the comments that you've given me on my painting tutorials and these uh, ramblings that I do every week. Um, you know, it lets me know that you guys are actually watching and you're, you know, engaging with the community. So uh, thanks that for that again, guys, and uh, as always... Have yourselves a great day.